Welcome to the Enbrook School Year 5 Science Masterclass. Now about this time of year, we were really looking forward to inviting you guys in here to do some really cool experiments. Obviously, we can't do that at the moment, so what we're going to do is give you guys some experiments you can do at home. And what we'd really love is for you to film yourself doing these, or take photos of what you've done, and then send them in to us. So what you can do is either upload them to Instagram or Facebook and tag us in that so we can see what you've done, or you can email them to me and we'll be able to upload them and then we can see what kind of stuff you guys have been up to. For biology, what we're going to do is make some agar plate to use for growing bacteria. Now you might have seen in labs using something a bit like this. But this is one you can do at home as long as you've got any kind of suitable container to do this and I'll show you one of those a bit later on. So, to grow bacteria, what we need to do is make them something that can grow on really well. So we're going to make a little jelly that contains all the nutrients they need and some sugar so they can grow on it properly. So the first thing I'll do is get the kettle boiling. And my kettle's just boiled. What you, what you want to do is hold the button down and let it boil for a good minute or two just to make sure it's really, really well sterilised. So I'm going to hold that down there for a bit. Mine's already boiled for a few times, so I'm going to stop there. The ingredients you're going to need for all the really nice nutrients that the bacteria are going to need to grow, I've got one low salt beef stock cube. Now it needs to be low salt because bacteria don't like salt. That's why we often put salt on things to stop bacteria from growing. So I'm going to crumble one stock cube into my bowl. Okay, the other thing bacteria really like and need to grow is some sugar. So one teaspoon of sugar goes into there as well. And the last ingredient, to make it jelly, otherwise it would be liquid, so it's got to be solid so they can actually grow on it, I'm going to use some gelatin. And for the amounts I've got here, I'm going to use three sheets of gelatin. That's quite a lot of gelatin, but we want it to set nice and firm. We don't want it to be really, really wobbly. So I'm going to put my three sheets of gelatin in there. And the amount of water I'm going to use is one cup or 250 millilitres of the boiling water. So be careful with the boiling water, or I've got to ask an adult to help you. Boiling water goes in, and then you give it a really good mix to make sure that all the gelatin dissolves and all the salt, all the sugar, and the stock cube all dissolve really well as well. So, I'm going to give that a really, really good mix. Give that a really good mix, and then now I've got this lovely sort of brown liquid solution in here that's got all the stuff the bacteria need to grow. So the next thing is to put it into yeah, your Petri dish. So you, you might have a Petri dish at home, in which case you use that. But what you can use is any sort of shallow, clear dish. Um, cupcake cases also work really well for this. So I'm going to pour a very thin layer into this. All you need is just a thin layer to cover the bottom of whatever dish you're using. And then I'm going to put a lid on there because we don't want other bacteria getting in there now. And you put that in the fridge for five or six hours or overnight just to cool and set. Here's one I made at home in my little Tupperware pot yesterday that is now fully set. You can see it's nice and solid in there. So the next bit is to try putting your bacteria onto your agar. And that's really easy because there's bacteria everywhere. Most of it is absolutely harmless. So, I'm going to take my lid off of that. And then what I'm going to use is a cotton bud to swab some surfaces. So I'm going to see how, uh, how clean the lab surfaces are by just swabbing some of the table there. And that's enough to pick up any bacteria that are on there. I'm going to gently wipe that over the surface of my agar gelatin plate. Really gentle, so you don't break the jelly. It's fairly firm, but it still can be broken easily. And then what you want to do is cover that, but cover it with cling film so you can see through it. My lid here, I can't see through. So I'll cover that with cling film 
and leave it somewhere nice and warm for a couple of days. So on a windowsill with weather like it is today, in a couple of days, any bacteria that are there, hopefully start to see them growing in a few days, some little colonies of bacteria. And you might see several different types of bacteria on there as well. So when you're filming this or taking your pictures, I'd love to see what different kinds of bacteria you found in different places. You can make a few of these and swab several different places in your house and see what different bacteria you get in different places. And what's really important is once you're done with these, the contents of this go straight into the bin and whatever you are using as your Petri dish gets washed really well. So in boiling water, if you're using a cupcake case, um, you can just throw it straight in the bin. There shouldn't be any really harmful bacteria on there, but just to be careful, make sure it gets properly sterilized. And that should be it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what kind of bacteria you've got growing in your houses.